to learn about 13 of the coolest book awards given out for fiction in 2023. It's a new year, and I, like many of you, have spent the last few weeks looking at everyone's best of lists and personal recommendations, and that is not a ring that I feel like I need to throw my hat into. However, it did make me curious what the experts think. What were deemed the most award-worthy books in 2023? We've got everything from fantasy awards to mystery awards to international book prizes. And I am actually surprised to say that I no longer think the Nobel is the most life-changing book award there is. And since I needed a way to arrange this list, we're gonna go from no money to some money to life-changing money. Because, as H.L. Mencken once said, when somebody says it's not about the money, it's about the money. It's about the money! It's about the money! <laughs> to kick off this party, we're gonna talk about two science fiction and fantasy awards, but neither of them give out any money, just clout, which is basically the same thing. We've got the Hugo Award and the Nebula Award. The Hugo is voted on by fans, and the Nebula is voted on by writers. Sometimes they do cross over. Quite often, actually. There have been 24 years in which the same book has been given both awards. And this year, that didn't happen. This year, the Hugo fan winner was Nettle and Bone, a standalone fantasy in which a princess must complete three impossible tasks to kill a prince. Even though it's not a retelling of a specific fairy tale, it takes pieces from a whole bunch of them. One NPR review I read said, it feels like a very cozy but still perilous D&D adventure. Okay, now for the twin to the Hugo, the Nebula. The science fiction and fantasy writers of America chose Babel as their winner. It is a speculative fiction novel set in 1830s England. And Britain gains unparalleled power through silver mining, which is achieved by the act of translation. And actually Babel is 2022's winner, but 2023 won't be announced until May, and we're not waiting that long. So when you think of mystery, what do you think of? A murder? An investigation? A detective? And traditionally, the Edgar Award goes to these types of mysteries. However, this year's winner, Notes on an Execution, is a little bit different. The killer is long caught when the story begins. He is just 12 hours from being executed on death row. Kukafka, the author, says, average men become interesting when they start hurting women. Notes on an execution was born from a desire to dissect this exhausting narrative. So instead of focusing on the dead women and the serial killer, she sets out to tell the stories of living women and how they were affected by this killer. And perhaps you don't like your book awards spattered in blood and violence then maybe the Andrew Carnegie Medal for Fiction is for you. And it also awards money for what it's worth, $5,000. And I mean, it is one of my favorites because nobody submits to this and it is chosen by librarians. And the winner this year was The Swimmers. This is a short novel about a group of swimmers whose routines are interrupted when the pool closes. For one swimmer in particular who is fighting dementia, the pool is the only thing that was tethering her to reality. She begins to experience flashbacks to her childhood when she was in a Japanese internment camp. And the second half of this novel focuses on the mother's relationship with her daughter. So pick your poison, would you rather have violent serial killer murder or heartbreaking tragic mother-daughter relationship? All right, all right, maybe you don't want either. Maybe you're looking for something a little wild. Then the Goldsmith's Prize is for you. It is worth 10,000 euros and was made to celebrate creativity and fiction that breaks the mold. This year's winner, Cuddy, is an experimental story about one of Britain's most popular saints, Saint Cuthbert, or Cuddy for short. It incorporates poetry, prose, play, diary, and historical accounts, blending fact and fiction to create a unique reading experience. One cool aside about this award, it has only been around since 2013, but they still want to recognize older works. So they started this thing called the Fantasy Prize, which is a hypothetical prize awarded along alongside the real one, and anything that was published since 1759 can win. So you can get some really good classic recommendations to explore too. But maybe you're feeling like you don't want to read something wild, and so you think, I'll just look to the National Book Award, that ought to be safe. Think again. While at one time this prize might have been a safe bet, they have been rewarding more experimental fiction in the last few years. And this year, the award, along with $10,000, went to Blackouts, which in a similar vein to Cuddy, mixes fact with fiction and uses photography and blackout poetry as well as prose. This book also uses a real-life study, sex variants, to supplement the narrative. And this real study is mixed in with the fictional narrative in which two men are having conversations about queer history and erasure as one of them is on his his deathbed. It is a fascinating book and it will give you endless rabbit holes if you're the kind of person that likes to look up stuff while you read, but it is not at all straightforward. Now, 
there is a good chance that you've heard of the Pulitzer Prize. It is largely considered the most prestigious award for fiction in the US. And it doesn't just reward books, but all sorts of journalism and photography and music too. All in all, they hand out 22 awards every year and each winner gets $15,000. But I also think it's one of the most controversial awards and that is because of the way that it works. What happens is a jury nominates three books. Those three books are then passed on to a 19 person board at Columbia University and this board has the final say. Sometimes if they don't like any of the nominations, they just decide not to give out the award at all. This happened with Gravity's Rainbow, Main Street, and most recently in 2012 when David Foster Wallace's The Pale King was set to win. And okay, that's their right if they don't want to choose anyone, but they refused to tell anyone why. Larson, the jury chair, said in 2012, there were multiple factors involved in these decisions, and we don't discuss in detail why a prize is or isn't given. The decision not to award the prize this year rests solely with the Pulitzer board. This year, rather than one winner, there were two winners for the first time in history. But don't ask any questions why, because you're not going to get any answers. The winners were Trust and Demon Copperhead. Trust is a novel that takes place in the 1920s, and it follows a Wall Street tycoon who is ridiculously rich. It explores excessive wealth and capitalistic America and the power and privilege that this wealth brings. Demon Copperhead, the other Pulitzer winner, also happened to win this next prize, which may also have the best origin story. Back in 1991, 60% of novels published were by female authors. However, when the Booker shortlist came out, it featured zero women. And so the Women's Prize was created to recognize the literary achievements of female authors. And it hands out a prize of 30,000 euros. With Demon Copperhead's win, this year also marks the first time that an author has won twice. Barbara Kingsolver also won in 2010 for her novel, The Lacuna. Demon Cock... Copperhead. <laughs> Demon Copperhead is King Solver's attempt to dispel harmful stereotypes of the Appalachian community. It is an epic story that follows an Appalachian boy in Virginia growing up through poverty and the opioid crisis. Believe it or not, one of the biggest international book awards is worth $50,000 and is handed out right here in the U.S. by Oklahoma University. Oklahoma! The Newstat International Prize, sometimes referred to as the American Noble, I've never heard it called that, is given out for an author's entire body of work. And despite it being given out on even numbered years only, have good news. Good news, everyone. The 2024 pick has already been announced and it is Ananda Davy. Davy is from Mauritius and is a major French voice with over 25 pieces of work, everything from poetry to fiction. My favorite thing about this award is that it states the author's representative text, which gives readers a really good place to start with the author's work. Davy's representative text is Eve Out of Ruins, which follows four Mauritian friends trapped in the country's endless cycle of fear and violence. We're leaving Oklahoma now and heading back across the pond for the Booker Prize, which awards a cool 50,000 euros. This prize was established to celebrate the best books published in the UK and Ireland. Originally, the winner had to be a citizen of certain nations. However, in 2013, they changed all that and decided to allow authors from anywhere to enter so long as their book was written in English and published in the UK or Ireland. And this caused quite a stir. Two years, very prominent American authors won the award, which led to 30 publishers calling on the booker to drop American authors. The letter argues that the rule change restricted the diversity of the prize and led to the domination of American authors. The call clearly didn't work because the rules remain the same. However, I will say that since 2017, no more American authors have won. 2023 was the year of the Pauls. Three Pauls were on the shortlist, leading to even more conversation about diversity. And the winner was Paul Lynch for Prophet Song. This novel is set in contemporary Dublin in a dystopian climate with a far-right government ruling. And it follows a woman's attempt to save her family amidst it all. And speaking of Dublin, the Dublin Literary Award is worth 100,000 euros for a single work of fiction. This award honors world literature and it is another awesome one because the long list is created by nominations from public libraries across the world. This year's winner was a German translation, Marzon Monomor. This story follows a middle-aged woman who has abandoned her failed writing career to become a podiatrist in Marzon, a city in Eastern Berlin. This presents as a bunch of vignettes of people in the community, mostly older class working clientele, and they tell the podiatrist stories from their lives as she works on their feet. One reviewer said, this is a wonderful account of the compassion, care, and humanity involved in the relationship between chiropodist and client. 
we have arrived at the ultimate award, the Nobel Prize. And this award is Dynamite. Funded by Dynamite. Pun. Alfred Nobel was a Swedish chemist and engineer who got rich off of his invention of dynamite, and he left all his money to fund the Nobel Prize. This prize is meant to honor those who give a great benefit to mankind, and it gives six people a life-changing 11 million Swedish crowns, which is equivalent to about a million dollars. This year, the Literature Prize, which goes to an author for their entire body of work, went to Norwegian author Jun Fossa. He's really not that well known here in the US, but globally, he is one of the most performed contemporary playwrights. He is so important in Norway that the government subsidizes him with a lifetime stipend and a residence near the royal palace in Oslo. He is also the first winner ever to use Nynorsk, which is one of two languages used in Norway, but it's only used by 10% of the population. His seven book series, Septology, is what kind of began to put him on the map here in the US, and it follows a painter who is grieving the loss of his wife. Each book covers a day written in one long sentence, the entire series happening in just a week. And this fact that there is little punctuation has turned a lot of people off. But the translator, Damien Searles, said, it's not difficult writing, you just add the pauses in yourself. It is not as confusing as people are making it. And finally, this is not a specific book award, but I believe this is actually the most life-changing amount of money on the list. The MacArthur Grant is awarded to 20 to 30 people every year, everything from scientists to activists to writers to artists, and it gives recipients $800,000 no strings attached. They do not have to do any reporting or anything. They can even use the money to change careers if they so choose. This is even more life-changing than the Nobel because the age ranges of these people are from 18 to 82. So a lot of these people are getting this money earlier in their careers. The only stipulation is that the candidate must either be a citizen or a resident of the US. And these recipients are nominated in secret, so they have absolutely no idea that they've been nominated or are even being considered for the prize. They basically get a cold call that says, hey, you won the MacArthur, here's $800,000. In 2023, there were 20 awards given and three of them went to authors, Manuel Munoz, Ada Lamone and Imani Perry. Ada Lamone is a poet and she is also the current US Poet Laureate. Her poems set out to heighten our awareness about the natural world and our connection to one another. Imani Perry is an interdisciplinary scholar and writer who has written multiple books about the activism and resistance of black Americans. Her most recent book was South to America, which won the National Book Award for Nonfiction in 2022. Manuel Munoz, I am so excited to see him on this list. He wrote one of my favorite books of 2023, The Consequences. And it is a book of short stories about Mexican and Mexican American farm workers in California's Central Valley. So obviously there are a ton of book awards that I wasn't able to talk about. I'm gonna put some of the ones I know about here, but I'm still not gonna get to everything. So if you have ones that are your favorite prizes, drop them in the comments below. Let people know about them. My name is Melanie, this is Drawn to Books, and I will catch you on the next one.